Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Rick at Alita's Way. How are you doing, man? It's been a minute. I feel great. Everything's good. Just, uh, you know, spending quality time with my family and, and making new music. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, super stoked about new music. Um, I know it's been a really tough time in the world for everybody. I hope the band is well. I hope you're well, all your respective friends and families. It's just such a, a clusterfuck of a year, to be honest, and speak frankly. Thank you. And, and, and same to you. Uh, same. I, I, all, all those well wishes I wish right back to you and your family and friends. Thank you, man. What a strange time in the world to put out new music just in general. I'm sure this is like the first time in your career you couldn't, you weren't playing a show the day the record came out or not on tour. You guys are so hardworking, such road dogs. Shine On is the new record, of course. So, um, you know, uh, I got to pick your brain about like, what's it like to put this record out in the middle of this weird year? You know, we're, we're always going to put uh, music out. So uh, it, it's definitely weird doing it during a pandemic, but we were we were gonna do we're gonna do it anyway, and we're gonna put more out next year. It's just what we do, you know. We we like to get in the studio, show what we're capable of. Uh, we love uh, getting together, creating new music, and we and of course we love playing shows. But you know, we're not gonna let uh, what's going on in the world stop us from from giving people new music because you never know who needs it. You never know who who's who you can help through your music. You never know who you can touch. Um, and and you know, I learned after our second record that. You, you we, when you're going in the studio to make a record uh you can't be fully selfish right you can't just always be thinking about yourself or your own chip on your shoulder it can't all be about this uh, uh this just selfishness inside of you so we, we were glad to put new music out during this time because it could have helped people it, it could help people escape from what they were dealing with it could have excited people. i know it excited people so we're looking to keep everyone excited we're looking to keep everyone entertained we're looking to do our job as entertainers, whether it's live streaming, whether it's finding ways to play outdoor shows, socially distanced. I mean, we're just trying to find solutions here. And uh, putting out new music is is one of those things that, that we knew would, would excite our fans, would excite people. And to us, it was a no-brainer. Awesome, man. I, I, I'm thankful for new music. I thank you for sticking to your guns and putting this record out this summer. Um, definitely been the highlight of the year for me has been new music and new art and you know, anything we can get to just distract ourselves for, for a little bit of time, I, I'm thankful for. So, yeah. Um, and you guys have always been very prolific, you know, before I uh, unpack the record a little bit. Um, you know, you guys seem to put out either a string of singles or new albums every couple of years. So I, I, I imagine you write all the time. Yeah, there's there's no limit to to, to the studio time. Um, I'm 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 in the studio all the time and I go back in. We've already we, look, we just put out a 14 song record. Uh, we've already got three songs for the follow-up, and then I go back in on Monday. Uh, we're building a studio here in Vegas in, in, in a suite in the Cosmo, and it's right back to work. You know, we, we hope to have another, uh, you know, five to seven songs ready uh, by November. So we're probably going to put another single out in November. Uh, let this, I'm going to let this record marinate with the fans uh, for a couple months. And then uh, we'll probably come back with, with more, new, more new music leading into the holiday, coming into the new year, because uh, it's just what we love to do. I mean, it's, it's a passion thing, right? I can't wait to get in the studio. I can't wait to be with the guys. Um, you know, I can't wait to show what I'm capable of every time I step in the studio. You know, it's, it's for me, it's, a, it, it's not only a challenge, but it's also a time for me to thrive. Um, I really love getting in there and, and starting from scratch and, and just letting all these crazy ideas in my head become a song. And, and then even more gratifying is when, when you hear the impact that these songs make on people, you know, whether it's motivating them, whether it's helping them through a breakup, whether it's helping them fall in love, whether it's helping them with an addiction they have. I, music is so powerful. And uh, I think a big focus uh, on my career uh, from here on out, it, it always has been a bit of a focus, but even more now honing in on it is just making sure that that I can spread a message to people that, that that's helping them, that that's empowering them, that's, um, you, you know, any any way that I can help someone uh, through the music is, is a big focus of mine and, and having them connect. Nice. You guys have always yeah had a great message, mostly uplifting, and you've been very frank about you know struggles and real life problems. I love heavy metal, as you can tell from my you know lair. But also like I like you know the human condition is the most important thing in life and experience. Then you know, obviously you can't. Uh, I love I love songs about swords and dragons, but like real life and real struggle is like what really pulls at the heartstrings. And I always appreciate that about your music. You're very honest and very candid in your lyrics and 
um, you know, it comes through in the songs. Thank you. Hey, look, I like I, I like Swords and Dragons too, man. I'm, you, you know, so we're we're on the same page. Uh, I think every favorite show I have ever in my whole life has a dragon or a sword in it. So, you know, uh, I feel you there. Out of hours watching uh, Highlander and Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, those, those are like two of my favorite shows ever. I watched Highlander as a, as a kid. Every with Adrian Paul, I watched every single episode of that. And then Game of Thrones, I've watched the full series of Game of Thrones three times now, full from front to back three times. Yeah, I'm pumped. I think uh, I think we're gonna start hearing about the follow up series uh, early next year. So that's exciting. Bird, <clears throat> excuse Bird, me. Sorry. And uh, yeah, man, but <laughs> super exciting. Yeah, why not? Like it was an event. Um, so yeah, man, shine on. Uh, a, a, a typical for you, like you said, fourteen songs. Uh, you know, even though they go by pretty quick, and you guys keep it very tight on the arrangements. Um, I like how deep this record is. Uh, you know, it's not just like the singles or the the Spotify hits for you guys. Even though you have a lot of success there, I like I like the depth of the record. I like you know obviously what it takes, but I like Heartbreak, Something More, My Derailment. These are really great tracks. It's it's refreshing to see like bands still care about the whole album, even though we live kind of in a streaming age. So I wanted to talk to you about that. Like sequencing is important. Whole records are important to you, obviously. Oh yeah. Of course, we're, we're going to continue to make full records, but we're going to do it in a way we've got to find a way to, to, to combine modern times with, uh, with with the times of the past where we got to find a way to find that happy medium. And I think releasing a couple singles, getting everyone excited and then dropping a full record, uh, it, that excites us too. It excites us to put, you know, 10, 12, 14 songs out and, and show everyone what we're capable of over a body of work, right? I think... The, the one thing that is different about our band is, you, you know, we don't have one hit song. We don't have a song that everyone waits for. And and it's the last song they play of the nights. So we have to stand there and wait. Like, we're, we're a catalog band. Uh, we've got six albums. I think every one of our fans has a different favorite song. And and I'm proud of that. You know, I'm proud of that. I'm also, there. there there's a lot of things that, that, that uh, over my career, I've been pushed to do and I haven't done because I, I want to be known for the body of work. I want to be known for the catalog. I want to be known for the songwriting. I want to be known for the performing uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, I don't want to uh, be most famous for a cover. You know, that that's fearful because people latch on the cover songs, right? And uh, you don't want to go on someone's Spotify and see that the cover has a hundred million streams. And then, and then the original song they wrote has 11. So uh, uh, we're really focused on just trying to uh, continue to create a body of work that inspires fans to come out, uh, support the music, support the record. And, and so far, so good. You know, independently over the past four years, we have over 160 million independent streams on our music. We own all the master rights to those. Uh, and it's changed our lives. So uh, it's just been, it's been, a, technology has been good to us, you know. I remember I, I got to see both sides of the music business. I started dabbing in uh, to, to having my meetings with Interscope and uh, Universal in, in about 2005, 2006. We started having label meetings and it was a bit of the old record business back then still. Uh, and I watched the transition happen, you know, I, and I also remember in 2011, 2012, when I first saw the little green dot that said Spotify and I was like, huh, what is this? And I remember reading about it and, and I remember that was honestly the first time in 2011, 2012, the first time that I thought, okay, I've got to get out of every deal that I'm in. I've got to become free. Uh, I've got to, you know, our future has to be in our hands. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think we've adjusted well to, uh, to, to combining technology and combining the past. You know, that's why we're still into putting out records, full length albums, but also we found a way to take uh, full advantage of getting our music out to more people than ever. I remember our very first interview, which is almost, you know, seven or eight years ago. And I asked you, we were talking about streaming and you're like, I'm not sure if I want to do a bunch of singles or EPs or smaller releases and do them where you were talking, you were like ahead of it actually this prevailing thought. And I know there was a lot of talk recently, the head of the CEO of Spotify was like, bands need to work harder and then you'll make more money. And I was, personally, I was like, you know, that can work for some bands and artists, but just, you know, and maybe that's true, but I don't think the record industry functions the way it used to. And you've always been very, like you said, very, I like almost a big band that's also DIY. So like you've seen 
both sides of it. I'm sure you move a lot of merch at shows, but also streaming raises brand awareness and pushes like the whole business forward, you know? It's life changing. And you, when, when you have more capital to invest in your business, you have more control of your future. You know, you have less people. Now, I think, I think a good way for, for the major corporations to keep their thumb on artists is uh, by controlling all the finances. I think when you're an artist, and I don't want to get too much into this, but I'm just saying what Spotify has done for us and what merchandise, everything you just said has done for us. Once you become financially stable and you become in a place where that's not one of your main concerns, uh, the music business gets a little bit easier, right? I think one of the stressful things is always having to go and ask a label for, for, for money or always having to be like, hey, guys, can you throw a little my way today? You know, and I think it affects your, your, create, your creativity. I think it affects your, your uh, discovering who you are as an artist, what you want to stand for, what you want to say. I think you're constantly worried about pleasing other people when you have to beg other people for the money. So I think uh, it, it really has opened up uh, our, our ability to go in the studio and have fun and, and stand for what we stand for and really know who we are as artists. A second thing is, Spotify's music discovery at this point is second to none. Uh, I think a lot of other people are missing the boat on artists. I think radio's missing artists left and right. It's like there are artists that are already far broken before radio e even knows uh, that it exists. And I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing. Terrestrial radio was where people used to once go to discover new music, to hear it first, to do all that. And now they're almost the, the, the last in the game. So uh, I, I really appreciate how and it took it as a challenge and other bands should too. Can you step in the studio? Can you put out content continuously and consistently that people fall in love with? Or are you a band that's just gonna live off your past, live off your one hit song, live off of the, the, the times of when uh, radio played your song a thousand times a day and, and, and that's, what you're, that's what you've continued to survive off of. Um, I prefer to survive off of uh, a body of work and I prefer to go in there any, any given day and, and prove that uh, I'm one of the best artists in the world, uh, especially in rock, and, and prove that creatively uh, we're capable of anything. Um, I think any moment we step in the studio, uh, we could create the biggest song in the world. And, and people can say what they will uh, uh, about their opinions on an artist feeling that way, but uh, anybody that surrounds us knows it's possible. And I think, when, again, when you have no corporation pushing you, you have almost no radio airplay, you have, you have no, uh, form of like guerrilla marketing the way the major labels do and you still we have 1.1 million followers on spotify we have 160 million streams and that's just pretty organically and 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 it makes us really proud to 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 show other artists who may have been feeling uh the way we were feeling in 2012 2013 you know an artist who who felt like there might have been unclarity on the future because there's so many people controlling your, your career uh, we feel like we've really set the tone and really have set the standard for what's possible uh, for artists to own their own rights, to uh, own their own career, to be almost a DIY uh, with a team. I think you have to have a team. I think it's great to have a team. I think your team just has to work for you and you don't have to work for your team. Um, I think that's very important. I think early on in my career, I felt like I worked for everybody else. Uh, I, had, I had almost uh, minimal to no control over my career. I remember it was impossible for me to get in the studio. I used to have to beg. I used to have to beg the record label to let us in the studio. And, and uh, I remember it was like Christmas when I would get the email, like, you're allowed in. You're allowed to go in the studio. I'd be like, ah, you know, on the first flight out. And, and you know, now I just go in the studio every other week, man. I'm in there nonstop. I'm building studios all over the country. If we have four days off and we're going through Chicago, I call uh, one of the producers we work with. I say, we're coming through for the three days off. You know, we're always in the studio, always looking to create and always looking to really take control of our careers. Nice, man. And again, I think now we've gotten to the point, having followed you for a long time, that your more than half of your career has been very fiercely independent and I think on your side of the table on your terms, which I think is great. And uh, you won't hear anything from me. I think you have to believe in yourself to make it this business. It's, it's the music business. It's not the music friendship. I love saying that. And, uh, sure. you know, it's a cutthroat world. So I like, I like the positivity and the self, you know, the self-confidence. It's important. Well, you Why definitely you have to have it because it? when we were trying to make that transition, not only did uh, everybody that at the time was working for us think we were crazy, but almost uh, 
we, we had to deal with, I think our first two years of independence, we dealt with more uh, uh, blacklisting uh, and, and everyone trying to bury us and make sure that we didn't thrive, right? We, we dealt with quite a bit of that. We dealt with quite a bit of people saying, all right, well, the band's going independent. Uh, we can't let them make it. So let's show our lack of support here. You know, uh, in the U.S., I think it's been seven years since we've done one major festival. Um, it's been seven years since we, we've uh, had consistent radio airplay. It's been seven or eight years since we've toured with another band. We don't tour with any other bands. We headline everything. And look, I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be able to headline anywhere. I'm proud to be able to go. You could throw a dart at the world and, and we can go there and play in front of some of our amazing fans. And I feel very blessed and very grateful for that. But uh, I, I, I just could, I, I was a little bit shocked by when we first made the decision to become independent. I was a little bit shocked by how much adversity we had to fight through from the industry. Uh, I was a little bit shocked by how much uh, people wanted to see us go away or be buried or, or you know, they almost wanted to believe in their hearts uh, what they, their opinion of the band was true, right? If, if, if someone that's booking all the major festivals says, oh, I don't see it, I don't like the band. Uh, I mean, at what point do you have to just turn the data after that, right? At what point do you have to just, I mean, it's been seven years, like I said, uh, as collectively as a band, we have 300 million streams, 160 million independently, over a million sales. Uh, and, and there will still be people that, that, that uh, you know, uh, uh, that are influential in the business on the major side that will try to say like, oh, that band hasn't done anything. And we're like, you know, it's, it's when do you, how long can you deny the stats and the data? You know, I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see that if, if we continue to do what we've been doing, uh, that when we get to the other side, you know, not only are we independent, but now we're starting to get support from uh, every entity across uh, the game. Nice. Uh, just as we uh, start to wind this down, I want to change gears for a quick second. Obviously, you know, you live in, you know, uh, Vegas is a, humongous music industry and entertainment industry town. I'm in New York City. Um, you know, obviously no one knows when this thing is gonna all be over and when we can get back to regular shows and tours, but uh, you know, what's the climate out there by you? Do you feel like smaller venues are gonna go away and only the bigger chain venues are gonna survive? What's your take on that? No, I think that, that this is gonna be an opportunity for a lot of entrepreneurs to step in and start something, right? I think that when some one thing ends, another thing, grows so i think if there there are some venues that were struggling most likely they were struggling leading into all this right and they, they didn't have the correct formula or they didn't have they weren't taking care of the venue enough or they weren't doing something right and i think if, if we see some of those venues close i do think uh, another opportunity will arise for someone else who's got that entrepreneurial mindset someone who's been dreaming of starting a venue i think 2021 we're going to get shot out of a cannon uh with live shows i think it's going to be uh, the busiest, one of the busiest years of music. I think uh, this pandemic feels pretty over here in Vegas uh, to us. You know, my, my daughter's getting ready to go back to school. Uh, you know, the cases are down to, to literally zero, no matter how they try to twist it or spin it. it it's just the data doesn't support it, right? So uh, you, you, there's even fake stories going on about Sturgis. And when you start seeing fake stories and fake everything, you start realizing, man, this thing's they're trying to, you know, hang us on by a thread, right? I mean, it's like uh, the, the we 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 have played a couple of shows, so you know, we played a couple of outdoor socially distanced events, uh, and and we thought it worked fantastic. You know, we thought the staffs of Sturgis uh, and a couple of these um, uh, uh, abate rallies that they're having, I think. They did a fantastic job temperature checking everyone that came through the gate, uh, really pushing socially distanced groups where everybody was kind of coming in together and then staying six feet apart from another party. Um, I, I think that uh, American society and honestly, all over the world, look, the UK, they're, they're finding a way to do out, outdoor events. Uh, Germany is trying to find a way to, to have successful outdoor events. There's a lot of people that, that, that want to be a part of the solution. Uh, and solving this problem. And, and I think there are multiple solutions. I think now that we're heading into the, the fall, I think a vaccine is on the way, uh, a cure is on the way. They've already got the therapeutics down packed. They just announced the steroids now that if someone's critical, they can just hit them off with these two steroids and they save the lives 
Um, I think that we've got a grip on this. I think America did a great job. I think the whole world did a great job uh, uh, learning about something that no one knew about. And now here we are. I think we, we've kind of got it sorted out. I think live music is going to be booming 2021. I think live music should be booming in November. Let's get it going. Let's, let's stop putting our focus on Every, under, every other industry in the world and start focusing on uh, uh, the music industry right now. The music industry took a really bad hit. No one's talking about it, right? No one's talking about all the layoffs that happened in our industry. No one's talking about all the bands that have been off. No one's talking about the bands that are no longer bands. No one's talking about the venues that are no longer venues. Some people want to call you selfish, right? People are so quick to call everyone selfish. Oh, you're, you're looking to play a show. You're selfish, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, well, how about you think of, of the hundred thousand jobs in the music industry that, that are that are waxed right no one everyone wants to think about just the the, the the thing that they're involved in right but the music industry ha has been devastated by this uh i do think that that entrepreneurs will rise there will be a great 2021 but i also think that the business got hit pretty hard uh leading up to this point eight months of inactivity eight months of uh, no live music for indoor venues and bars um it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how 2021 bounces back. I think a lot more outdoor shows are gonna be prevalent. Yeah, that's I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I said often I feel like when we come back finally next year we're gonna be like Vikings. Even the smallest little show is gonna be like super, like then it's gonna feel huge like a big thing. So I'm looking forward to it. We need it. We need it back. Um, I always like to end interviews on a little bit of a wild card question. So just for a, a final thing, I like to have a little fun and uh, take it back to young Rick and ask, like, what was the moment that made you want to make music or pick up a microphone or, you know? And well, I, I feel like I was always around music in my household. Uh, my, my parents were always playing The Who and The Beatles just in my house. And and um, I was always in my room playing Zelda Ocarina of Time or any Zelda game, any, any, any video game. I remember being a kid and I just had the biggest sound system in my room. And, and my parents were always like, turn that down. I was just blasting, uh, uh, you know, Soundgarden and, and just Nirvana, just so many bands. I was just listening to music, even, even Def Leppard. And, and uh, I mean, I could just sit here and name bands all day long. And I would just sit in my room and I would beat these long games and I would listen to music. And then I think uh, a, a moment for me where I realized that, that this was for me was I was laying on my floor with a pen and a pad and I was just trying to write, write, write almost like a poem to my brother who was addicted to um, heroin. And, and I remember uh, that all these natural melodies just kept coming through me. And, and I, I wrote the song Brother, which was on our first record. Uh, that was the first song I ever wrote. Um, and I remember just laying on my floor with my back, you know, on the ground and, and I wrote that whole song. So, uh, I knew I had uh, some form of a gift at that point, right. For all these melodies and these choruses, this, everything was just kind of like bing, 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 like zapping off. So my moment would be when I wrote my first song, I knew, I knew that this was, this was something that I was better at than, uh, than most other things in my life. And, and it felt really natural. And, and I think after I wrote that song, I, I put these goggles on, man, and, and, and I just had tunnel vision. You know, what are you going to do? I'm in a band. Done deal. I dig it, man. Thank you for sharing that story. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Uh, Shine On's awesome. I always appreciate talking to you and following you. I continue to follow you. I'm looking forward to getting our lives and our music back. Thank you for doing what you do, Rick. Thank you for the love and support. We, we appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to the next time. And we're going we're gonna to be at the forefront of bringing live music back. We'll be one of the first bands out. We'll be, we'll be the test. We'll test the waters as soon as possible. And, and we want to be part of the solution to getting uh, the fans live music and to getting artists back on track. All right. Well, hopefully see you in person next time, man. Thanks so much. I'll see you. Thank you.